Okay, so let me quickly revise what we have uh, completed till now in Selenium in automation. Okay, first we were doing it like this that creating the main method and then we were writing everything. Okay, in which there were two ways to launch our Chrome. One way was this by giving the path of the Chrome driver, and the second way is you use Web Driver Manager and then you use it. Simple. These two things does the same thing for you, so you can choose any one of those. Now let's see C two. Okay, the same code we divided into two parts. Okay, one is this base class in which we used this added before method and after method. Okay, mm. don't worry about annotation, guys. This thing we will uh, cover in um, when we'll learn um, test ng. Okay, so control shift F one second. Hmm. This thing will cover. Um, at the time of test ng, but for now, just remember that these are the annotations, and annotations are nothing but extra information. Okay, now see. Now XPath, you understood. You know how to find the address of an element. Now today we'll see how to find the, or how to do the action on an element using those addresses. Okay, so these all were the dummy code. Let's start with the original code now. C five. Okay. I'll rename it and I'll rename it as base. Okay. Base means the common methods are here. Base methods. Okay. Now let's see. Click. Aarti, just a second. Mm -hmm. um, I, mean, I mean, if you've got a free time, uh, just let me, I mean, Explain me the architecture of this automation, like you know, first. Sure. Oh, yeah. Like okay. how how the classes and interfaces are working that you want uh, to understand? No, I mean you said like we used to use the Selenium ID and this. You're not using that anymore. Like hmm. now we are using Selenium, like web driver. you know, hmm. yeah, web driver. So hmm. how are we gonna send like invoke the HT? I mean the addresses and how it works the server. Like that internal thing you want to understand okay yeah in general. okay i'll explain that okay hmm. so today we'll learn how to click on a button how to send the data to an input field and um, let's see how to get the data these three things okay these are the actions now let's see close all c5 we directly wrote the test right uh, okay now let's create one class where we will learn about click. Hmm. Okay. See, I created one class. Okay. In this class, you know that every method should have at rate test annotation. Then only it will be considered as a as something, some some test that needs to be executed. So first we'll create one method public void any method you can create suppose test one okay or suppose your method name is verify the form functionality okay and that form will fill using the test now if this is your test method you can add at the rate test annotation here okay now see Let's open some website. Tell me any good website here. Let's work with my website only, demo QA for now, for a few days for practice. After that, we'll pick some more tough websites. Okay. Now suppose this is a website that I want to automate. I want to enter some details at the at the end. I want to um, click on submit. Okay. Now see this. How to write a code? You know that to open this website, we have to give this website correct somewhere. 
So either you could have given it in the base if every time your website is same. See here, you can change it here because every day, every time you know that you want to open this website only, or you keep only the launching of the Firefox here and remove it from here and take it as a test layer. So we'll take it as a test layer every time. Okay. So suppose in here, I'll write. Okay, I need driver here. So what I'll do? Extends. Correct. From base, I got the driver because in base class I have driver, right? Here I have global driver. This driver I need. So I'll extend my class to this class so that I'll have driver here. Driver is the main main element of your code. Without driver, you cannot proceed further. Now you got the driver. Now you will write here driver dot get URL. Okay, I mean get, and then you will provide your URL where you want to automate. Once you gave this, after that, what you have to do? You have to enter here, and then you will enter your details, right? So to enter your details is your method, but then where to enter is a locator. You have to provide the locator or the address of this field. Then only you can enter some details there. So if you see, right click, inspect. Okay. If I just right click here or if I inspect here or if I click on here and then put it here, both the things are doing the same thing. If you see for this field, there are so many details available. ID is available, placeholder, name, input, whatever, extra details are present. So I can use any of these details to create my XPath. Or I always told you, if you have ID, directly go for ID. Or if you have any solid thing which can make your field or different go for that one okay so there are multiple type of locators i'll explain you what what i mean by that see when i write driver dot find by this is a method we use to find one element now using what you are finding it so by dot either you can use id either you can use name either you can use x path okay so depending upon what details either you can use class name okay so there are so many types of locators available. If you see, using type, using ID, using class, using entire XPath that we learned that, that day. So you can use anything, okay? You cannot use placeholder. There is no uh, locator kind of placeholder. If you want to use placeholder, you can use um, XPath, like create XPath using this placeholder data and then use it. So for now, we will use ID, okay? We'll say, okay, I'll tell my driver to go and find the element by the id okay and then in double quotes i'll provide the id you guys getting me in semicolon yeah. you guys getting me right yeah and one one question RT. so hmm. for now we are using id normally like you explained yesterday about xpath we hmm. we open the website we go to hmm. uh, you open one one thing right in the bottom and yes. we search Stop. we search for the hmm. xpath Hmm. We create X path and then we will copy that and paste it in the code. Yeah, yeah, same thing here. If I'll change it to instead of ID, I'll change it to X path. I have to paste that content of X path from um, website DOM to here. So, how do you know? Like, you put the oh, okay, you know very well about the website, right? Yeah, so that's why you're using directly username. Yes, because see here the ID is username. Correct. Yeah. And I know that the yeah, ID is unique. I told you Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower is unique thing. You don't have to look for Eiffel Tower in every places. If you will tell someone that go and go to like a president house, the people will directly go there. You don't have to provide the entire address for that. Like right? for every website, it's same? Every website? No. Every element will have a unique ID. So for every website, it's the same. I mean, like, for example, open any website. Um, for example, this Maven repository website. If you see this this image, see this image is not having ID. So let's see which who have ID. Uh, control F ID. Maybe these buttons will have ID, or maybe these categories will have ID. Okay, they also does see this division has ID. So this ID yeah. is unique to this division. 
Okay, if you see, yeah, this is yeah, getting yeah. highlighted here. This thing is getting highlighted here. See, if I move my mouse cursor on this, this thing is getting highlighted. That means there is no other division with the ID navigation. So you can directly use ID. Okay, what about the other IDs? ID logo, ID search. There hmm. is three IDs, right? They are for some other sections. Which one it will take? Like you just writing uh, driver dot uh, find element by ID. So hmm. in the in the same website you showed me now, there is three IDs. Ones. Yeah. But, the, but I'm giving you this, right? I'm giving you that. Okay. Why? How I'll go to your house? I'll go to your house by your uh, your house number, right? In the same way, I'm giving you them their ID. So they, there will not be any confusion. Even if there are multiple houses there or multiple IDs there, there will not be any confusion. I'm straightforwardly saying that go to house with this ID. With this house number. No, we, we like before, like uh, mm -hmm. you explain, like we put end operator, end or something, and mm -hmm. then okay. some extra extra that in x path not here right now i'm using id right so i can directly provide it if i'll write x path i'll provide extra attributes to make it unique but i know already that id is unique so i don't have to provide any extra attributes there okay let me try and explain this to you see mm. See, there is one element here, one element here. Both of them contains ID. This element contains username. This element contains user email. So if I say that go to element with the ID this, my driver will go here. It will not care about any other elements. In case of direct locator usage, okay, direct ID or name or class name usage. In case of XPath, it will follow the entire address, the way your uh, postman follows it, follows yeah. it right? One by one, one by one, one by one, and then finally it will reach. So in case of ID, you don't have to worry because it is unique. If someone says username in entire ID, uh, DOM, any field with username, it will directly go here. You don't have to tell even that which type of element because any other type input or div or any other type will not going to have ID username. If there is something, if there is in the same website, if there hmm. is ID equals to username in two fields, so that's not possible. You do, that's not possible. This is what I'm saying. There cannot be two fields with the same ID. ID should be unique. ID will be unique for sure. Right. Last name can be same. Full names can, I mean, like type can be same. Everything can be same. But ID is, is going to be unique. There cannot be any other element with the same ID. Yeah. Okay, don't worry. So yes, you told your driver to find an element, any element in, in entire DOM with the ID username, because I know that there, there will be an, only one element with that ID, okay? And then once you found it, then what do you have to do? You have to do some action, but you found a web element because anything on a website is a web element. So you will write web element. What is your web element name? Suppose a uh, full name equals to oh I remove driver okay see this you told your driver to go and find an element that element you will put it in this container which is a web element container now you will just write full name okay this full name dot what you want to do you want to send the data so to send the data we have method send keys and what data you want to send suppose Arjun okay this is the first name that you want to send or um, <clears throat> okay this is first name this is last name okay this is a full name you want to send so whatever data you want to send you will put it in double quotes because it's a string value for sending the data you will use this send keys method and where you gonna send it in the full name field Full name field is a web element. So you will put create a web element kind of container. In that container, who will put the value? Driver.find element by dot id username. These guys will sorry, this driver will find this element and then will put it here 
from here we will fetch it and then we'll send the data you getting it yeah yeah okay so it's going to be a little bit quick guys so what i'll do inside the base before quit okay before and after right before quit i'll provide some weight so don't worry about this i'll explain you what is weight and everything but for now just understand that we put thread dot sleep for weight okay thread dot sleep we are asking our driver to sleep for some time because work is done so before closing the browser sleep for 5 second and then do something so 1 second equals to 1000 milliseconds so i am giving 5000 here so 5000 milliseconds sorry 5 second this is 5 second actually okay yeah. so if you see here hmm, let's execute this oh we are executing it on firefox that's why we should change it to chrome but still let it be see pravin we got entered in the first name in the full name after 5 second my website will close see it got closed okay so let's change it to chrome i don't like firefox much okay now you understood how to send the data okay now let's see how to get the data okay same thing here the way you wrote it correct same yeah. thing i'll copy paste here but this time i'm going to get the data so see suppose i want to get the data of this header okay text box i want to verify if the header is text box on you or something else so i'll right click i'll inspect it here so see this div does not contain id so in this case i cannot use id because either i can use this id and from there i can jump to this one by using child and ancestor and everything but if if i focus on this element i don't have id i don't have a good class i don't have i'm like class is there but this class can be um <clears throat> same in many um many elements so what i'll do either i'll use the text but then the text is something that i going to verify so how can i take take text the text of that element itself i'm going to verify so i i don't want to use text so what i'll do i'll reach here i'll create the x path in this case i'll reach here and from here i'll try to reach here so how to reach from there to somewhere here so let's see double slash yeah div in square brackets at the rate id equals to it was app okay see now i reached here now from here where i should go i should go to either header or directly to this div correct i want to go to this div here is my element present but if you see this div and this header this div and this header is a children of this div so can i write slash child of type Div, okay. I came here. Now inside this, where I wanted to go, or oh, where we wanted text, to go. One text second. main header text. Here, right? We we reached here. Okay. Now from here, can I go for my grandchild? I can, right? So yeah. I'll say, okay. Uh, D S D S E N D N T descendant. No, you mentioned yes. Oh, okay. Last letter. Yeah, yeah. i'm making it hard i'm mean, like i'm using hard x paths here so that you will understand easier ones anyone can use okay so descendant which type of descendant i wanted div kind of descendant so see one is this one second is going to be this one yeah okay the third is going to be this one so i'll just put index here third one main header okay so i reached here so this is my x path Hmm. Okay. Is there any standard X path like you know we have to learn the pattern like how do we write like with the branches with the, you know with all the things is there any like that or according to the code we have to write every time new one? No. See, you just have to make sure that your element is getting recognized uniquely. Okay. Okay. There should not be any duplicate addresses for your house as well as Pravin house. You 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 guys cannot have same addresses. 
right mm-hmm. yeah. so that's why you can write your address in such a way that it will make your address unique now instead of this see i can remove this now i reached here are you okay okay so when i reached here uh to this child i had many ways to travel here just to make my address unique so i chose the descendant one you can choose a uh, division you can say division uh division and then division this also you can do like you are traveling one by one then also you so the, there are two divisions that's why you mentioned two levels right like one like that four levels i'm four keep traveling levels. like i'm not skipping single slashes is for traveling to each element one by one i told you right absolute expert yeah, and yeah. relative expert this time yeah. i'm not directly jumping to this div this time i'm traveling one by one by one so what i'll do slash div okay and then again slash div again slash div so i'll keep traveling till i reach here this is again a different way of expat or i can do one more thing i can say okay double slash div okay but which one for a second uh-huh. hmm oh. okay you can mention the okay index kind of for this array yeah you can use this one see you reach to this container class okay one second you were here now you are saying from here you want to go to div which is your child but having a class main header so okay it main header yeah this one see okay inside this if till here you were you reach till here using uh, selenium access child okay hmm. till here after that you directly said okay i'm directly jumping to the one element using double slash who is having class equals to main header okay okay so there are multiple ways your expats can be different for the same element i'll be writing different expats you will be writing different expats but our main motto here is to make that address unique no yeah. it's it's very Tough now. How to write all these things? Yeah, with practice. Yeah, with practice, we'll get it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just make sure that you are starting to write your X path with some solid element, like from ID or from you know, because your element does not contain much details. See, if I mm-hmm. remove this, if I remove this, okay, I just said okay directly in entire DOM directly jump to any div. which is having class equals to main header it is giving me one of one it is working mm-hmm. now i agree but many times these things will not work for you you will later on you have to modify your code so always make sure you first reach to some solid element and from there you travel to your element for now we can work with this also like directly we are jumping to this div in the entire dom which is having class equals to main header okay 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 Mm. you mention so we can use this one now simple one yeah so in case in future mm. if there is any changes so we have to change the code in for testing exactly exactly suppose all of a sudden this thought that they should enter one extra division here and yeah. uh, you know anything um, maybe they changed main header to something else um, main header 2 maybe so if they'll change any of the attribute they let least not change the id of it of this element so from here when you say go to division 3 no matter if their class is got changed or their text got changed from this element the division 3 is always going to be this only so no if have... if they add in the middle of uh, in, in the container and pattern if there is hmm. one more thing so hmm. we should change it right to 4 it will change yeah that's okay i'm mean, like um if they are adding some extra let's see what happens is i'll tell you come on give me a minute hmm so now see if you are creating your address using id that is not going to uh, break any code because id not going to change even if they'll change it you just have to change the address now you are saying if they will enter something extra in the code but still 
Like of course, if they add some division, you cannot directly. Uh, in that case, of, see if in that case you are using if this double slash, then it will not matter. But if you are you are using single single slashes, of course you have to travel that div, that for yeah. sure. But uh, still, if you'll find like with experience, I'm telling you, when you yeah. use xpath more than um. any other elements right your code yeah. will need a very less updates because most of the time your xpath starts working yeah and make sure that you write it in such a way don't don't use the absolute path that i yeah. told you in on a very first day don't go for absolute it first thing it is not readable second thing it is very tough to update later on so yeah so let's use this and let's go to eclipse and we'll say full email or just email field email oh header okay in header we are saying this time not id but xpath and xpath is this why and we from, wrote header like we can write anything anything yeah just yeah. for your understanding header element other element whatever you can write anything and we are saying from header element this time we are not trying to send the data we are trying to get the data so get text i am trying to get the text of it now this text is going to be a string type of data string header text equals to the one which my driver will find using this get text and this thing we have to print on screen to check it so yeah okay okay so let's see if it prints the correct text on the hmm you saying okay, something coming yeah. mm -hmm. so let's execute it Okay, so here the text text box got printed here, and yeah. that was your header. If you see, that is what was your header. But now, the question here is just by printing on the screen. Guys, give me a minute. okay um so yeah just by printing this on the screen we will not be sure because we we are not comparing it with some with some value for example if your lead says that okay the header should be this and you are getting some header some different header text box 2 maybe so you have to compare these two things then only you can say okay this is right and this is wrong just by printing on screen it does not make any sense okay so what i'll do we'll do the comparison and for comparison we use assertions okay we use assertions so see how to write assertion assert equals this is one method which just compares if two things are equal if not that means your expected is not matching with your actual value and you will fail it okay so for that see If you if you look at this method, it is saying boolean actual and boolean expected. So first actual thing will come. So what is the actual text? Header text, correct. What is your expected text? Expected was text to space box. Okay. So now you what you'll do? You will compare it. For now, for example, my expected was something else. 
okay i'm i'm making um like intentionally i'm trying to make it fail now let's see what is the result i click run as <clears throat> okay test got test case got failed okay failed now let's read the reason for failure okay if you see it is saying expected was text box 2 but found text box that means this is the failure reason this these things this log will get added in your uh, report final report so that in morning if after uh, executing 3000 4000 test cases at night in morning when you want to see why my test case got failed you should you should be able to understand it by writing uh, or by reading this text okay so to understand that we we are using assertion so that it will tell you that okay <clears throat> in in test case you were expecting this but we found something else and that's why we are failing it so you can work around it okay guys understanding it right hello yep. yes yeah? yes so in yeah. the same way we have multiple assertions for example either you can use assertion assert equals to that will compare two values or you can use assert true okay that that case i'll um, will see you i'll show you later <clears throat> this thing you understood okay let's make it back to the expected correct one that is text box and in this case our test case will get passed okay so we learned how to send the data we learned how to get the data and how to verify if the data which we received is correct or not now let's see let's click on some element mm can we change the header I mean, like if it is text box something mm. into different text means uh box or text two text uh, <laughs> box one box two like that can we change yeah why not i mean like here you are saying in the code no. yeah Then header text yeah you want to change it to something else yeah tell me what you want to change it to mm. Mm. Page header. Text. Yeah, page header. No, no, no. Uh, the name. I mean, in that website, there's a text box header, right? No, we can't change this thing. No, can't, we cannot yeah. change anything of website. Yeah, we can't okay. change anything of website. It is already created. We just have to verify if everything on website is correct or not. We can't okay. change anything here. Okay. 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 Mm hmm. okay so now you uh, learn how to send the data you learn how to get the data now let's see how to click on any element now this element can be your checkbox can be your radio button can be your any kind of link you know, can be any kind of buttons normal buttons in on any of these things if you want to click you will use this method which i am teaching you right now okay so let's see suppose i want to click on the submit button okay or uh, let's go to some other page now suppose this check box or radio button okay okay suppose we'll work with this check box page now so i'll copy it i'll paste it here i'll say okay driver dot url we were working with this one um like okay, let me create a copy of it instead of this was for uh, set and get data okay this method now we'll create the copy of it and we'll say new class here we'll learn about click method okay in click method what we'll do we'll create one method 
पब्लिक वाइट एक मेथड एंड आई पुट एट द रेट अब इट एट द रेट टेस्ट बिकॉज इट्स अ टेस्ट मेथड ओके इफ यू गाइज आर नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग प्लीज लेट मी नो ओके दीज थिंग्स गोइंग टू बी डिफिकल्ट फॉर यू फॉलो फ्यू स्टेप्स आफ्टर दैट ऑल्सो इफ यू आर फाइंडिंग इट डिफिकल्ट प्लीज लेट मी नो नाउ द वेरी फर्स्ट स्टेप योर इज to open the guys what is the very first step that you have to write in your test case if already website. under exactly website if already under base you have launching and closing of browser the very step in your code will be opening the url so how you open the url driver dot get but see driver is not coming here that means you have to extend your code to the base, base class Correct. From base class, you will get the driver. So see, driver error gone, and we'll write driver dot get. This time we are working on some other website which is checkbox. So I'll write this one. After that, what? After that, if I want to click on this checkbox, I have to find the address of it first, right? So see, I hovered it, and you, if you see this, um, this element. <clears throat> Is having class height width fill current color okay SVG this is the image one second guys see if I travel up if I go to the span this is also highlighting this thing only look at the, this screen okay I'll just mark it here see that thing is getting highlighted if I click on this one that skin is getting highlighted box is getting exactly if I click on input that thing is not getting highlighted okay label so see. <clears throat> I was not able to write XPath here because none of the details was kind of like very strong detail about that checkbox, right? So what I'll do, I'll go here to this label, or I'll go to here, okay, anywhere. I'll go to this label. I'll say double slash L A B E L L A B E L label at the rate for equals to this, okay. By writing this for I reached here, okay. After that, where I want to reach, I have input span, span, and this. But these all are childrens. So what I'll do? I'll go to child two. I'll say child colon colon. Which type of child I'm looking for? Span. <clears throat> so now it is saying that there are three child, which is type span, like male child and female child. Okay, so there are three male child, one female. So you want to go to any of the male child. So which male child? First one. Yes. So I'll say okay. I want to go to span one. Wow. Under that span, I have an SVG. Okay. Under this span, I have this SVG. But uh, most of the time, guys, you will not be able to uh, you know target the SVG because it's an image. Okay. So what I'll do? I'll stay here. On the span mode, okay, like here, because it is also highlighting the same checkbox. So I'll stay here, and then I'll use this XPath. I'll stay here and I'll check first if this XPath works or not. If not, then we'll change it to some other XPath. So see this driver dot find element by dot XPath, and what is the XPath? This is the XPath. Now. I know that this thing returns the web element, so at the end also I can write dot click action. You can write together, or you take it in the web element and then put the action. Both the things are same. You getting my point? Both the things are same. Either take this thing in a web element and then write that web element dot click, or write the entire thing and then click. Both the things are same. So let's see okay. if it works or not. Is there any keyword web element? Like mm -hmm. we use it, right? Okay. You okay. see, web element. We created the web element first. First, our driver found the web element, and then mm -hmm. on that web element, like header element dot, we have done the action. Get text. Okay. Right. I yep. could have written yep. this get text at the end also directly here. Then I don't have to take it into a web element. But I'm teaching you both the ways. Either take it in a web element, then click on it, or directly click on it. Both the things are same. Okay. Okay. So see, in this way also you can do it. No need of taking it into web element. Okay.
So see this. If this checks the checkbox, if not, then see it got checked. Saw that? It is saying you have selected. Everyone saw that, or should I execute it once again? Yeah. Yes, it's checked in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now it got checked, but then just by clicking on it, because visually I can see that it is it is checked. But how I'm gonna verify it? So for that, what we'll do? Where is the link? Okay. What I'll do after checking it, I know that this text shows me that you have selected this. So I can verify this, or I can verify this that what is the current status of my ch checkbox? Is it checked or not? After checking it, okay. Then only I. Uh, this is how you manually also you're gonna verify it, right? So let's see. There is one method here. Mm -hmm. I'll say boolean. Boolean is what is true boolean? True or false. <laughs> exactly. It's a data type. Okay. True or false. I'll say status. Boolean status of what? Checkbox. Okay. Status of checkbox. You are expecting something here. Either it is true or either it is false. True when it is um checked. False if it is not checked. <clears throat> so if you see, this was my element on which I clicked. I'll write it again and I'll write is selected. Okay, this is one one method. But then is selected works for drop down one second. Checkbox is also okay. <clears throat> so it's selected. So if it is selected after clicking on it, I'll check the status. If it is, it will return true or false to me. Is selected method returns me true or false. Okay, now I can verify it. I'll put assertion here. Assert equals, I'll say, okay, first actual, actually status of the checkbox expected is true. You were expecting it to be checked, right? So your expectation will write beside actual value. It will compare, it will tell you your test case got passed or failed. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's execute it once again. So it got checked. Now, in the code, what it shows, let's see. Okay, after five seconds, it got closed. Now see, pass zero, okay. failure one. Okay, no, my task has got failed. Let's see why. See, expected was true, but found false. Okay, that means it is not working for checkboxes. Normally, it works for a uh, radio, sorry, drop downs. But let's see. Okay. Okay, let's see. Code is not wrong, but this method is not for your checkbox. So give me a minute. Determine whether or not this element is selected or not. This operation only applies to input elements such as checkboxes. Then I should work for this. Okay. Uh, option in a select and radio buttons. For more information, elements of the support refer. Okay. Returns true if the element is currently selected or checked false otherwise then it should work that is not working okay what i'll do after clicking i'll wait for some time maybe it is so fast that just just after clicking it is not taking the data so let's wait for some time here these things happens okay so let's wait for two seconds and after that let's look for status so every time you will add thread dot sleep you just have to click on this throws throws or uh, interrupted exception guys what is the meaning of throws why we use throws what is the use of throws keyword we learned that in exception handling 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 the over the errors. correct but then what is what is the use of throws message, why we message, message uh, exactly custom message. not custom message that is with throw throws throw. is just for informing that your code might end up throwing exceptions so be careful we are just informing people. Maybe if Pravin wrote some code, he'll inform everyone that my code can throw this exception. So either you handle it or I'll I'll handle it later. For now, it throws exceptions. So just for informing. So here also we are not putting it in try and catch. We we know that we can have exception at the end. 
so we are just telling them or informing that that if you will use this click method be careful my code See, can throw uh, this one, one second so you wrote this throws and interrupt and hmm. interrupted exception before hmm. or just now just now you just click now. when you click on that you... yeah when i added this no thread or sleep ah, yeah, yeah, error. Okay. so i just added it here yeah okay so now let's see after two seconds also if it is giving me not selected then uh, we have to change the code a little bit let's see yeah. okay again got failed the same issue okay that means the issue is not with this the issue here is we are working for span we should look for checkbox okay mm, it should work but if it is not working no worries guys what we'll do um sometimes the selenium works in this way only even if your code is correct it will not work that happens okay so in that you can find the alternate solution you can go for this text if this text is visible then only we'll mark it as uh or we'll consider it as selected or not so how to get the text get it directly so see diff id result and span so and one more thing every time you write a code okay see if i write div my dom is moving right my dom is moving again and again i have to inspect that element again and again like this see again and again i have to do this right it is moving so what you can do you can go to sources and you can click on the stop button it will stop the execution Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. The moment it stops the execution, then you can write div at the rate id equals to. <clears throat> okay, it didn't stop. One second. Okay, let it be. Um, id result. and then you are looking for the very first span okay and you will try and get the text of it so <clears throat> so we'll write this here because that one is not working so we'll change it to here and we are not looking for is selected or not but we are looking for get text so you need to remove the boolean also mm -hmm. i'll change it i'll change it to string status or whatever keep it as it is and done and here i'll expect the correct value which is this thing yeah, you have selected so see right click edit in html and the moment you add it in HTML, you can copy it. <clears throat> okay, let's compare these two values. Okay, this time my test is got passed or failed. Oh, again, got failed. Why? Invalid selector, unable to locate an element with the XPath div ID result span one. Why not? Because of falling error. What is the error? It is not a valid expression. Why? Div ID, this is this. Div this. Clash. Yeah. Square bracket, maybe square bracket extra after span one. No, after... no, see. Not not that kind of... hmm. let's see. This is my X bar, it is being highlighted. <clears throat> it's correct. There is extra square bracket, Darty. No, see. 
Yeah, now you can yeah. check. Hmm. Hmm. You are right. Okay. <clears throat> wow, it is taking too much time. System okay. Re-executed. Sometimes the, uh, that happens with that website. I have experience with that one. All of a sudden, it will stop working. So just stop that and re-execute it. Okay, checked. Now after five seconds, it will tell you. We'll remove five seconds. It is taking time. Okay, now see. This time your test is got passed. You see, it got passed. Failure zero. And here also, if you see green, it is passed. Okay. okay. So in this way, you will compare your final output assertions. Okay. Either assert two Boolean values or assert two string values or assert two numbers, whatever. You have hundreds of method. Okay. So in interview also, they'll ask you which assertions you have used most. Okay. Now this is done. Guys, uh, understanding it, right? Yep. Send keys, okay. get text, and click method. Now, click method can be used with anything, okay? I'll show you. You can use it with checkbox. You can use it with radio buttons, okay? See here, radio buttons are there. For them also, same same way. Just find that radio button XPath and then click on it. And uh, any link also you can click by same way, okay? Now, now, look at this radio button. There are multiple radio buttons here. In this case, if I inspect any of the radio button, you see, the XPath is a little bit different. Uh, sorry, details are a little bit different, okay? So here the label is X, sorry, Y. Another element will be there. Uh, this is for this element, right? Another element is this. For them, the details will be inside this div, okay? Another uh, radio button is here. For them, the div is like this, okay? But now if your lead says that one by one, one by one, just count how many radio buttons are there. In that case, you cannot write XPath in such a way which can give you address of three buttons. You know that you have to write a XPath in such a way that it will it should be unique, right? In that case, what you'll do? See, if I know that all these three buttons, all these three buttons comes under this div, sorry, this div. Actually, there are four buttons. This label is also there inside this div. So you are saying this div, this, 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 these are the four, four children of this div. But if you see this div, there's no details attached with this div, correct? Yeah. You guys getting my point? There is no details attached, no ID, no class, nothing, nothing, nothing. So in that case, what you will do, how you will find the children of this div. You can find this div, this div is having ID. From this, you can go to following sibling. And from this following sibling, you, you can go to child's. Very good example here see i'll first go to this div because i know that this div is having a very solid data which is id so how to write uh, xpath here hmm. we can go from bottom right bottom yes you can go for bottom but i don't see anything from bottom here also see there's no element. No, no, no no i'm asking there's four subclasses here we can't use them and find the first div hmm. okay you're saying can't. You are uh, yeah, from the travel there, reverse, yeah. but yeah. then, but then look at the situation right now. You don't know. I mean, that is your final. If I tell you that go and verify the text of an element, you're not going to use text as a data for XPath, right? So you are saying, okay, go to this div for finding the radio button. How many radio buttons are there and write the XPath. But this is your case. This is what you have to verify. You cannot travel from radio button to something else. That is a part of your testing. So you will travel from somewhere else to these radio buttons. You will reach to that radio button from somewhere else. You getting my point? See here. Yeah. In this header section also, when we, okay, you have selected this text, we are verifying from this element. 
but to find this element for span i could have written span in bracket at the rate contains at the rate text equals to you have selected i could have done that also but then what is the use of testing if you am if i'm using the text in my xpath itself then what i am verifying right so don't use that thing which you have to verify at the end in the same way don't use this check boxes to reach to those check boxes getting my point you read somewhere else and then try to reach the check box i could have done this like first i could have reached here and i could have found all the siblings of it but then those siblings is my testing my testing says find all the elements or child of this div so i'm not going to use this so what i'll do mm one more thing i can do i know that i'm not going to verify this thing i i'm just interested in these radio buttons then what i can do i can go for this i'll say okay div having the text how we write a text text is not a attribute so we'll directly put text equals to this correct text yeah. is not a attribute so we don't put at the rate guys can you see okay. properly yeah see so text is a is not a attribute it's a it's a text okay so see this yeah. where am i class is attribute hmm class is attribute anything which is in a key value pair is a attribute okay. okay anything which is not in a key value pair is not a attribute so see do you like this site it is a stand alone thing it is not connected with anything it is not so class is mb3 but this is nothing like it is there is nothing at the left hand side of it so this is a text okay so now yeah. i reached here from here if i have to compare the radio buttons or if i have to find the count of radio buttons what i can do i can say double slash following sorry single slash following following means the your Ex younger sisters exactly your okay. younger sister or your younger uh, siblings but preceding is your elder sister or your elder siblings so following sibling s i b l i n g following sibling which type of sibling you are looking for all type of sibling so you will write star all type of sibling but then i want all of those siblings to be a radio button to be a radio button okay so what i'll say so what i'll say um one second following sibling okay and i'll say okay their class should contain radio in between right then only i'll consider them at radio so how you write it contains guys remember these concepts contains yeah. what at the rate class correct contains what comma with contains you use comma and in single slash radio see how many it is returning you 3 1 2 and 3 it's yeah. not so class it's equals to or comma okay no actually when you use contains right there are two methods contains and starts with whenever you are using those don't put equals to here put comma okay in any other case if you are using class then you will use or any attribute you will use equals to but with contains and starts with you will use comma always mm -hmm. remember this okay. okay okay so now you are understanding the importance of selenium access how why we use selenium access someone was asking yesterday right uh, pravin you were asking me that why to use it this is the reason because it makes me um, show the entire flow of the xpath like from where which element you are targeting these elements because see if i'll someone will tell me okay from here jump to this one that's not possible for me i can't do it i can't do it because there is no element or any attribute attached with this div so i can't do it so what i'll do i'll find some solid element and from there i'll try to travel if this would have been like if this is also one of the radio button in my case then what i can do i'll reach here i'll file in the following sibling div and for that div i'll look for all the children getting me yeah. okay if there is another radio button like under the page or somewhere else then that not considered sibling right no 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 of course these are sibling okay. because these all are at same level and they have a common parent so that's why okay. they are sibling so if i just close it whatever is getting hidden inside it is sibling these mm -hmm. all are sibling to each other and child to this one because it is getting hidden 
these all four okay. things are getting hidden this is not sibling see okay. this is sibling to this one but then these are sibling to each other okay so they are on same level this 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 are sibling to each other but child to this one this step mm. correct but where were we here right but these four are sibling for them this is parent for this parent this is uncle i mean like they are brother or sisters together and then for them they are parent so if you can reach here and then you want to reach here then you have to go for an ancestors sorry descendants okay but yeah, here and if you want to reach here then ancestor mm -hmm. yeah getting it now so yeah i mean now we can use a lot of uh, this keyword like following yeah. sibling or yeah, whatever ancestors hmm, okay. whatever make make your expat unique use that thing these okay. things are called as selen uh, selenium axis okay uh, you just saw the half of the video right in next half of the video uh, these things are there okay so go and watch that okay that it will be easier for you so suppose yeah. i created the expat now let me copy it and i intentionally wanted it to return me three that's why i'm not even extra modifying it i'm not trying to make it unique because my target is to find the count of radio buttons and i know that this expat gives me three radio button so i'll just copy it and try and understand it here okay see in this case what we'll do okay let me comment this code guys for a minute or uh, let me create a new class that will be better mm video buttons count or i'll say um find elements okay here we'll create one method so public void m1 is my method inside this i'll write driver okay driver will not get uh, visible here so i'll write extends base and here i'll write driver dot uh, find element by dot x path and this is my um, x path correct now what i'll do i'll take it to next line just click anywhere and take it to take it to next line java automatically handles it okay and comma <clears throat> see look at my code my code says driver dot find element with this x path but before that what i have to do driver dot get url but this time my website changed right so now see you are returning three elements from here right so what i'll do read your button now see find everyone everyone in your interviews they will ask you what is the difference between find element and find elements okay the answer to that is find element returns you single web element you see this is a return type so find element gives you single return type now what is happening here you are giving a x path which returns you three web elements three radio okay. buttons so now your code will fail for sure it will fail now see if i because there is a confusion right so if i execute it okay it will not get executed i have to write at the rate test above it okay if i execute it now now look at the error every time people will ask you what is the error if element not found what is the error if you give multiple address uh, like x path which matches with multiple address what error you will get all these questions shows your experience so always try to read the errors and remember it that okay i did this i got this error so see this my test case got passed seriously aaru ko tai ro me petko okay thank you issue fail One second. Malay Thailia channel, okay? Okay. Okay. Should fail actually. It's not failing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me think. Contains class equals to date. We have three elements. Strange. Okay. it should normally fail i think if any of the elements is getting found uh, it is marking it as pass but it should fail okay we'll see that later the concept here is if you write find element 
it gives you a single web element okay if you are writing find elements it can give you multiple web elements which is matching with that address so now if i change it to find elements to find elements okay find elements it will give me list of web elements which is matching with this x path okay do you guys understand list i told you array list linked list yeah. remember yeah so what i'll do i'll say list of type of web elements list is a collection list of web element is equals to nothing but driver hmm. see this this is a code actually here web element variable declaration expected after this what Okay, and Store. please, mm -hmm. yeah. So you have to keep keep give your container name also. You are saying okay, uh, radio buttons. Okay, so this radio button is a container which can hold a collection of web elements. Correct. So it's a list of web element, and that list of web element you will be storing in radio buttons container. and how you want to store it in radio buttons container because your driver will find that element for you using this x path mm -hmm. okay so in yeah. this radio button you have all the elements now you what you want you want to know the size because your lead says and go and find the count of radio button so you will say radio button this is list of web element dot get Where did you type it is like okay. this one second size yeah size see three okay mm -hmm. so size method will return you the count of uh, elements that you have in this con collection so what type okay. of collection it is it is a list type of collection so inside this you have all the radio buttons using size you will print the size of it so size is going to be a number so number you can store in int mm -hmm. type of variable and you will print this so instead of printing you will assert it Yes, sir. You, what you were expecting actual is count. Expected is three. Correct. Mm -hmm. You are expecting yeah. three radio buttons. So using assertions, you verified. Using size, you got the count of that uh, list of web element, and then here you will get the list of web elements. So let's execute it and see if the code passes. Then we have written the correct code. Otherwise, fail. Fail. So always remember if you are working with many elements then change it to find elements otherwise keep it as find element see it got passed that means our expected and actual is correct okay if i'll make it as 4 and i'm expecting four radio buttons but in this collection using the six path if they are finding only three that's a failure so let's see See this. It got failed, and the reason for failure is that expected was four, but found three. Obviously, right? The X path which we have given will return only three, so failure. Getting me, everyone? Yeah. Yeah, understanding it. So just keep practicing this. These things are very important. These things are basic things. Okay. So till now, what all we have covered? Let's see. We'll create one note here. The the way we created it for Java. One second. Where is that note we created for Java? Hmm. Let me take it, copy, and let me paste it at the top layer. Okay, I have to create it inside this only or what? Okay, let it be. 
So what I'll do, I'll create in automation, I'll create one new file. New file. Um daily syllabus cover coverage. And here I'll write all the uh, methods. So today we learned about send keys. Click, get text, assertions, uh, find element and elements. What else? Mm. Base you already know, click method you already know, find element and elements you know, and get text. Yeah, four things. Okay. So yeah, uh, just just go through the expert session again and use it in your code. You will understand it. What we are trying to do here. Okay. Yep. Any other questions, guys? <laughs> any questions on in any code? See, look at this one. Look at this one also. See, no matter how code good code I write, if my XPath is not correct, it is not going to work. That's why I'm telling you XPath is very important. XPath or locators. Learn to write XPaths properly. No matter how many calculations and how many assertions I have used. If my XPath is not correct, it will not work. Simple. Okay. okay? So be careful. Yeah. Okay. I'll stop the recording here. Give me a minute.